Hey everyone, my name is Pritam and you're watching Tech with Pri. Welcome to my channel and I'm back with another tech video. Now this is the ninth video of our newly created technical series called ServiceNow. So in my last video, we have started a new section in our series and the section is the ServiceNow customization. So we have completed the ServiceNow overview one. I have also discussed like what are the things under the customization that we are going to cover. And also in the last video, we have covered the we have covered the client side versus server side. What are the differences and how they works, right? And I have also informed you that uh, if you did not understand the concept of client side and server side, then rest of the customization would be difficult for you. So if you did not watch server side versus client side, which was the last video. So don't worry, I'm going to put the link in the description and you can also find the link right now here on your screen. So let's see what we are going to learn in today's class. Okay, so we are going to learn today about UI policies. So this is the first customization we are going to learn. That is the UI policy. It's going to be very, very, very interesting, guys. And I don't want to waste time and I want to jump directly into it. So UI policies. So UI policies first, it runs on the client side. You know what is a client side now. So I don't need to explain. So again, if you have any confusion, I would suggest you go to my last video and clear your concept about the client side, right? So it runs on the client side and it is works in a form. So, you know, like I said, customization. So you can make the way you want. You can customize. Okay, well, I'll when I will create UI policies or I will show you some of the UI policies which are already there in the ServiceNow developer instance. So you will understand it's the way of customization. Okay. So it works in the form only. We can apply in the fields in a form. Uh, no coding required. So mainly there are some customization available like business rules, UI actions where you sometimes need coding. I mean, see, like I explained uh, for this course, like ServiceNow system administrator. CSA examination, you don't need to understand anything about coding. Coding is not required. Okay, so we won't go for the coding one. Okay, but here and there we can just try a few things, but don't worry, I'll explain you those things. So all the customization can be also applied. So there is a place also for script where you can write script for UI policies, business rules, UI actions, but we don't need that. That's what I'm telling. Next, what you can do with the help of the UI policies. So with the help of the UI policies, you would be able to set a field mandatory read only or you can do you can hide or show fields based on the conditions okay now this is the uh, this is a screenshot i have taken from the ui policy so whenever you will go trying to create a ui policy this uh, section or this interface would come but don't worry i'm going to show you each and everything each and every step while creating ui policy so let's go to the service now and let's see some existing ui policy and then we'll create our new ui policy okay Let's go. Okay, so right now I'm in my developer instance. Now, in many ways, you can access the UI policies. So UI policy, again, it's a table in service now, like other table, like incident change, and like I have explained to you already in the initial discussion of service now in my first video, second video, that uh, service now is all about table and records, right? So all the records are stored in the table. So the policy UI policy that we are going to see, that's also a table. So you can click on all and you can search for the UI policy, UI policies directly here. You can see under system UI, we have the UI policies. So in this, it will it will show you all the policies that are applicable for all of the table in service now. So the list would be quite high here. Okay, so if I click on that, let's show you. So you can see we have total 2,171 policies, UI policies are there. That means these are not for only from a, particular table like incident change problem. So this is implemented in a lot of table. You can see in the table section, we have different, different table name. Okay. So this is one way we can access UI policy. We can create a new one also from here. You, you If you want to see only the policies which are applicable in the table, you can filterize from here the table name, but you can also go to the all section. Let me go to the incident table, incident dot list. It will open the list view. So from list view also, you can access it. You know it, right? When we discuss about the menu, you have seen under the column options menu. If I go to configure, I have the option for UI policies, UI actions, see UI policies. Okay, so this is one way you can open it. It will open for the incident table only because this is the incident table which is open right now. 
also you can open an incident or click on new incident uh, to get the form view and from here also you can go to the form menu then configure then ui policy okay so i have shown you different ways to access the ui policies now here you can see in the in our incident table there are 10 policies only there okay this is the ui policy only for the incident table so let's open this ui policy and let's understand what is there so field set to mandatory for all states so that's the uh, name of the ui policy right so now the policy is open so you can see the table name is selected as incident and the policy is active right now so that's why the active checkbox is marked and the short description is field set to mandatory for all states that we have already read when to apply when this ui policy will apply you can define it here right so now here there is no condition so it will apply all the time now if i scroll down this is very very important section now we have now we have here ui policy action so first you set a name of the policy short description give a description of the policy and then you decide when to apply and when the condition will met what would happen that you will decide under the ui policy actions now here there are two things called caller id and short description so if i click on caller id what is there ui policy name is same from the short description table incident so in which field you want to apply the policy or the rules in which field you want to apply so it is written as caller and caller under and the application is global mandatory under mandatory it is showing true that means this caller field will be mandatory in the incident form so the and there was no condition that means it will always be as a mandatory field okay and the visible and read only section is leave alone leave alone that means don't need to do anything here both the section okay now if i go back there are other action also like short description you can see mandatory true and these two read only and visible is leave alone so that means what this policy is saying to service now whenever you will load a new incident page whenever the new incident page will come this policy will apply and it will set caller id and short description mandatory so user has to put caller name and short description so if i now open a new incident so from here i will type incident dot form and you would see now here you can see caller is a star field and also short description is a star field so this ui policy is working in this service in the form view in the fields right now let's let's add another field as a mandatory okay so what i'm going to do i can already it is define all the things so i'm going to click on the new op, new here to create a new ui policy action so now i will choose uh, let's see which field you want to become mandatory Let, let's put assignment group so we want assignment group also become mandatory so you have to put a assignment group that means whichever incident you are logging for whichever issue you have to put the team name and then only you can submit the incident right so what i'm going to do is that here i will choose the assignment group see there is a assignment group i'll click on that now the field name is assignment group so i'll click mandatory under mandatory i'll click true and i'll leave other two as leave alone and now i'll choose submit now this ui policy has been updated and you see the form has been loaded now and under caller short description and assignment group three are now mandatory so isn't it interesting so with the help of the ui policy you can control this stuff so whenever you will work as a system administrator you have to do this kind of work based on the client requirements okay now suppose your client says that whenever the category would be a database we don't need the service field so service field is not required when the category is database okay so let's create this ui policy so again whenever the category i'll choose from here from database then this service field will vanish okay so let's see and also you can go to the other uh, ui policies that are available and in the same way you can check it okay so i'm going to click on new table is incident and i will name it as no service because we don't want the service field for no service for no service for database 
category so you should make the name clear and proper so that you know later when you will check you can understand okay and now from here when to apply section I'm gonna choose when this policy will apply when category of the incident would be database so when the category will be database then what will happen first I need to save it or you can submit it I'll save it because uh, if I click on submit the page will just go back to the previous page so save is always safer as I explained to you before so now I have the when to apply section is fine there you can see there is a tab called script so you can also run some script which is merely for UI policy uh, we don't need that even okay so I'll go back to the when to apply section and here now I'll scroll down and I will add UI policy here so I'll click on new so from field name now I'll choose I don't want service field to be visible so very service service field name service now here I'm gonna do visible false so it won't visible okay and I'll leave the mandatory and read only field as it is now I'm gonna save it or I can submit okay now this policy is there if I just go back you can see the policy is active right now so I'll go to the my incident form I will reload this form or refresh the page so I'm right now in the incident form so I'm gonna choose category database and see, you see the service there is no service field right when I choose other category the service field will back but whenever I will choose database it will vanish because we have designed the UI policy in such a way so isn't it interesting guys okay so let, let's do another one let's do another one so what I want is this time so now what I want is that I want now let's see uh, let's so when the state is resolved you won't be able to change the short description okay I mean it would become read only so let's see if we can do that so let's first I'll show you by solving an incident let's make it something hardware issue assignment group now it's a mandatory field so we have to put assignment group let's put it on service desk and first I'll save the incident okay now first I, I cannot directly resolve it so if I right click on save it you see now there is a, another UI policy is there so if you directly resolve try to resolve any incident you have to fill up this information resolution code and resolution notes so let's just put something here I'll discuss later about this field so I'll just right click and save now you see the incident state is resolved but still you can update the hardware uh, sorry update the short description right you can type anything and you can then save it right but I want that with the help of the UI policy I should not be able to change anything so I'll go back to the policy and click the new one I'll name it as resolve incident <clears throat> read only short description again you have to mention some name which you can understand later okay so when it would be apply when the state of the incident incident is resolved when the state of the incident is resolved what will happen first let me save it what will happen under the UI action I will create a new UI action I want the short description short description field to be read only so I'll make read only as true okay and then I'll save it so it is saying right now that there are multiple UI policy with the same order of this field the run order is not predictable resolve incident read only short description make fields read only on close okay this is coming this is nothing to worry so I'll go back to the incident and you can see now it is resolved the state and the 
short description you cannot change it becomes read only so maybe you just need to refresh it once to make it apply so isn't it interesting so there are so many things you can do guys so i've just shown you a few of them so what you have to do you have to go to your developer instance go to the ui policy create ui policies check what are the existing ui policy and and do some more fun right so this is it for today guys if you face any kind of issue while doing the ui policy you can ask me in the comment section i would love to help you and also if you find it helpful and you love the video then hit the like button and also don't forget to share with your friends and family so that it can reach out to many people okay see you on my next next video which will be ui actions so before actions make sure that you know some policy okay so see you in my next video bye bye take care